Hello everyone, my name is Angie. I am a narcissistic abuse survivor and my channel is dedicating to help you overcome narcissistic abuse, understand what it is, get free, stay free, and be free to be who you are and yourself. A lot of people want to get revenge on their narcissist because they have been left angry and hurting they have been left to realize that they have been duped. They have been lied to and manipulated. And it's normal to want that person to feel the same thing that you have felt. One of the most difficult things that you can cope with is watching one that hurt you trot off unscathed while you are left pining or writhing in agony. While it may look rosy from where he's standing, keep in mind that you have the ability to grow and become a better person. Your narcissist does not. Again, realize that you have the ability to grow and become a better person. Your narcissist does not. So, before you start plotting out a method of revenge, there are a few things you should consider. Here is a quote from Chinese general Sun Tzu. Know thine enemy and know yourself. In a hundred battles, you will never be defeated. When you are ignorant of the enemy, but know yourself, your chances of winning or losing are equal. If ignorant both of your enemy and of yourself, you are sure to be defeated in every battle. Be sure to know your enemy. Your enemy is a predator. He feeds off the emotions and kindness of those closest to him. He lies, manipulates, and cons to get his way. He is disconnected from his own emotions. He feels a sense of entitlement and has an impaired ability to feel remorse or guilt. You will not find emotional deepness in your enemy. It's just not there. What a narcissist possesses are pseudo emotions, lacking in deepness and substance. Every demonstration of emotions are superficial and short lived. He has learned to adapt by mimicking the behaviors and emotions of others whenever necessary. The dominant feelings found in a narcissist are number one, anger. This is generally the default setting on the narcissist emotional scale. Any little thing can trigger an outburst. The ifs and whens are not consistent, so you never know when it's coming or the level that he will take it to. He is a projector and likes to pass off his feelings onto others. Anger is commonly used as a manipulation tactic or as a control mechanism to keep his minions in line and on their toes. Number two, smugness. When a narcissist pulls one over on you, he's feeling pretty good about himself. If you're hurting and pining for his return, he loves it. That is sheer bliss for him. Anytime he can confirm to you and himself that he's smarter and more superior, he will feel a sense of delight that looks and feels a lot like gloating. He will feel a sense of delight that is just blissful for him. Do not expect concern or compassion when a narcissist is inflicting his brand of torture, expect him to feel pleasure while he twists the knife. Number three is frustration. A narcissist has poor impulse control. When he sees something, he wants it and he goes after it. But if there are obstacles in his way, they can be a source of great irritation. When people don't dance to his tune and acknowledge his superiority, he will become exceedingly annoyed. Number four, boredom. 
Narcissists have a very low tolerance for routine. He quickly develops a tolerance to people and objects, and his head is on a constant swivel looking for anything or anyone shiny and new that would generate a new thrill. Another dominant trait of his feelings is number five, obsession. When a narcissist finds a new target, he is a man obsessed. He can't get enough of it. He wants to know everything about it. He becomes consumed thinking about it night and day, working himself into a fevered pitch until, of course, he grows a tolerance to it and boredom sets in. And number six, contempt. Narcissists hate people and all of humanity for that matter. They hate the objects of their obsession and they hate themselves for being dependent on the supply they provide. They would rather be alone and avoid humanity altogether. But their incessant need for attention and admiration makes that impossible. To the narcissist's sense of grandiosity, we are all objects whose sole purpose is to provide him with amusement and adulation. George A. Bear says, the best revenge is living well. When you are involved with an abusive, malicious, ego maniac, the best course of action is to take the high road and do nothing. Just get the hell out of Dodge and don't look back and deal with your pain on your own. When you are stuck on anger and resentment and all you're thinking about is revenge, those negative emotions have taken a toll on you. For one, they will slow down your healing process and keep you fixated on the situation and stuck on the pain. When you are so wrapped up in anger, it makes you paranoid and jaded. Don't let him change who you are and turn you into an angry, bitter person. Understand that when someone has walked away from you, they have told you all you need to know about their feelings and what their intentions are. You can't control them. You can only control yourself. Trying to make them feel jealous while they are in a cold phase won't work either. If he has found a new target, in sight and your relationship is over or hanging by a thread he'll have no interest he'll view your attempt to make him jealous as nothing more than an ego stroke now you can cause narcissistic injury which is any slight real or imagined threatens their ego or sense of grandiosity Pointing out to them and others their flaws or what they've done may cause them to fly into a rage. Their need to protect their ego at all costs is what drives them. They feel no guilt, only shame. And the only thing important to them is how they look to others. Causing them physical harm or damage to their property may also incite rage. But remember, if you persist, you will not go unscathed. They may cause you physical harm, lay criminal charges, or they may cut you out of their lives rapidly so that you can't do any more damage. Believe me, any hostile act you visit upon them may be visited back upon you tenfold. If you do act out, all anyone will see or remember are your seemingly irrational actions. You end up looking like the one with the problem. And all this does is give him more reasons to justify what he's done in his eyes and everybody else's. How you deal with this pain and anger and resentment, this defines your character. And remember, while you may think that you've got the short end of the stick you can heal yourself and go on to have a healthy, happy relationship with someone else. He cannot. All of his relationships are bound to suffer 
the same fate. So be grateful that he's someone else's problem now. So after all this, if you're still bent on payback, recognize that what a narcissist fears most is being ordinary, unimportant, and forgotten. So forget him. Find your bliss and fill the rest of your life with happiness and love. Let him have this battle. Just make sure in the long run that you win the war. That's your best revenge.